Hi, um, Pink Lady T-Birds just happen to be listeners of this. Well, watchers too. My name is Jimmy Pink and I don't do Ruby videos very often, but I really love Ruby. I've been there since day one. Yes, I actually pay for first, even in my current financial situation. Price went up too, and I don't watch anything but Ruby. That's how dedicated I am. I pay $6 a month just so I can watch Ruby on time. Now, with that being said, um, this is something I want to start doing a little bit more of because what really interests me about Ruby are their fairy tale, fable, other story counterparts. And um, I myself have even created a team of my own. I never did much with it, but I did an Alice in Wonderland team, um, Aqua. But we're now into volume seven. Um, we're in Atlas and Mantle. And we have this character of Robin Hill and her happy huntresses, which are the equivalent of the Merry Men. So today we saw Fiona Thyme. That is our little sheep faunus. Um, I love her. I really enjoy her as a character and I hope she doesn't die. And I don't think she will. But in the meantime, obviously everybody in Ruby has an analog. Sometimes people have two. So... I just want to talk about the solidification that um, Fiona is Friar Tuck. Okay, so the first thing is, obviously, we have the same initials. You know, we have Fiona Thine, Friar Tuck, just like we have Robin Hill and Robin Hood. But it goes so much deeper than that. And I really think the Kruby is trying to really come back to its roots at this point. Um, we're getting a little bit of comedy again. We're getting some cute stuff. I'm not going to talk about the episode. I'm just going to talk about Fiona right now. So the first thing is, is let's talk about the origin of the name Fiona Thyme. So Fiona, name-wise, means white, fair, and pure. Um... Which, you know, in itself seems to be very, I'm a good person, what have you, all of that. But here's some other very interesting things about the name Fiona and how that ties into Friar Tuck. So Fiona is also the patron saint of drunkards. You know who is... Famously, a big fan of ale, Friar Tuck. Um, so that was interesting. And also, in the grand tradition of Ruby, she also has a secondary meaning, as far as I'm concerned, and that is Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everyone, everywhere that Mary went, and in this case, Robin, her lamb was sure to go. And as we can see, she was the one up there speaking. You know, she kind of sacrificed herself for Robin. And, you know, that is something that Friar Tuck has been known to do. Friar Tuck has been known to do that. And also, um, Thine. And while I'm talking about Thine, or Time, let's, let's talk about that for a minute. Because Time, or Thine, or however you want to pronounce it, Um, is also very symbol symbolic of sacrifice, um, as well as some other things. It is known to be associated with courage and bravery. Um, some people did use that to purify their temples and homes. Again, this is tying into, and especially the time as well as the sheep imagery, really ties into Christianity and Friar Tuck, obviously, was a holy man. Um, but I found that interesting that that's what they took from that name. They found something that fit. Of course, thyme is a green herb. And with Fiona being white, we can see that she has, you know, the white hair along with the ears. Her eyes are green. Still fits into her uniform, um, which I find not to be so much with the Aesops, but it seems like they really connected the merry men into the naming trope um, that Monty created. 
But something else I found interesting about thyme is it's also a healing herb. It's referred to as the Bible it is. Um, you know, they said that was the plant that they gathered for Jesus to lay in the manger. Um, it does. It is mentioned in the Bible in that point, but also it has healing properties. Now, something that we haven't seen with Fiona is her semblance. And if you haven't noticed this volume, we're getting a lot of people that have similar semblances to our characters, either almost identical or the complete opposite. Somebody else who seems to quote unquote have healing properties is Jean. And Jean doesn't have a counterpart in the Ace Ops so much. Yeah, he's teased a little bit as being goofy like Mero, but I feel like this fits a lot better. And as you can see, time is used for a number of things, but I find it interesting that it is used for a lot of stomach issues. And as we've seen this volume, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, um, Tyrion does attack her where your stomach is in the midsection, what we would consider to be the stomach. So with that, I do have a small theory that she is going to be able to heal herself. Um, and that way then there, there's our Jean counterpart. Uh, with that else being said, some other things that I noticed, um, again, is the sheep imagery. Now with sheep, um, sheep, is the most used name in the Bible. Um, and that and that kind of ties into my theory as well as her being the Friar Tuck allegory and her being a sheep or a lamb that has, that has so much biblical meaning to it. And of course, Friar Tuck being a holy man, but also that ties into my theory of that she's going to be able to heal herself. You know, Jesus is famously known as a healer. And with the sheep slash lamb imagery, not only are Christians considered a flock or sheep, but Jesus is the lamb. Um, that ties also into my theory that she is also going to be able to be a healer or to be able to heal herself. I will be shook if, if she dies and she resurrects herself because Ruby wow, you really went there. Um, but again, I honestly believe it, you know, it's obviously the Friar Tuck analogy, but with her being that sheep, her being that sheep faunus, that lamb faunus, I'm starting to think that's going to go a little bit deeper than them using religious imagery because she's the fire, excuse me, the friar truck. Fri can, I, can I talk? The Friar Tuck analog. Um, I think that we're really going to see, um, and you know, they do say the Bible is the greatest story ever told. So we're very familiar with characters that sometimes do have double meanings. Crow is famously an example of that, um, where he is from the poem, the crow and the raven, but also he's the scarecrow as far as the wizard of Oz. So we do see characters that have multiple meanings and I do see some biblical things that go along with that. Um, some some Bible stories as far as her being the sheep. I think she's going to be able to heal herself. Um, that's going to be based on the time the time that we just talked about, um, as well as her being Friar Tuck, who is the equivalent. And also, like I said, this the whole Saint Fiona thing. You know, is a patron saint. Now, one very, very, very slight, and I think we all knew they were going to be the merry men, um, but I found this to be interesting that sometimes Friar Tuck, you know, the Friar Tuck I was familiar with is fat and old and a drunkard, but sometimes and quite often he is portrayed as a skilled swordsman or archer and Fiona's weapon and once again, with Ruby and the double and triple reasons and rules and combinations of things. Now, that weapon looks like a sword to me. I mean, we have plenty of weapons that are multiple of sword. I'm sure it's also a gun. Okay. 
Um, but what else does it do? We haven't seen. And she was sacrificed for T with Tyrion today. You know, she got sliced. I, at this point in time, I'm pretty sure she's going to heal herself. I'm pretty sure she's going to heal herself. That's where I'm at. That's what I'm thinking. Um, just based on some of the other things that I have mentioned in this video. And I was just going to do the voiceover. And for a lot of you guys that are not familiar with the channel that just may be tuning into this because you're a Ruby fan. Um, I usually don't edit. Like I usually just say what's off the top of my head because my first thought is usually my best thought. Um, but I did want to put these graphics together because there were some things to me that were immediate. Oh, she's prior tuck. But then amongst me just trying to do graphics to confirm that, I came up with so many more theories. So many more theories. And that St. Fiona being the patron, saint of drunkards, and also just the brilliance of Ruby's naming, because they fell off for a little bit. Let's be honest. They fell off with the names and Monty's, you know, naming mechanisms and how everything was supposed to go. Well, Fiona means white. Thank you for giving somebody a name that means a color. Um, and, you know, then, of course, she has white fleece. So I do see a Mary had a little lamb. Like, you know, she's following. Obviously, there's some other things about um, the name Fiona as far as white and fair. Um, but also that time, you know, represents courage. But then at the same time, the sheep or the lamb symbolizes gentleness, innocence, and purity. This is such a good name, you guys. Like, this character, like, thank you, Kruby. This character, I have faith that it, that it, it's going up. I made another video um, about Ruby this year or this season. Um, like I said, I don't do them that often. And it's because when I saw the first episode, I was completely disappointed. And I was like, this isn't Monty's vision. But now, this character, Kruby, killed this. So I really, really, really believe she's going to heal herself. I need her to be able to heal herself. Because how deep this name goes and what they did with this, it would be a disappointment if we got her for basically an episode and a half and she's gone. But I'm going to really think that she heals herself. As far as this goes, I really enjoyed this episode. I really enjoyed this character. And this was kind of something I just threw together after I watched the episode because like I was completely fascinated you know, that we're getting back into character names that actually mean something to who the character is and the background, the reason why I started watching Ruby to begin with. So this is something I want to continue doing, of course, a little bit more eloquently, like actually using footage, actually showing my face um, and still getting this information for you. But if there's characters that you'd like for me to do that with, or if I come up with another Ruby theory, you guys just let me know but yeah it, it, it looks like ruby is coming back to form now it could also be a star wars situation where they're just repeating everything we have the love story of team on team juniper again we have everybody on this series all the new characters seem to be an exact replica of characters we already know that are in our main group of travelers penny is gonna have to die again let me let y'all know that right now. Penny is going to die again. Um, but it feels good. So thank you so much. If you watched this, if you listened to the whole thing, if you have any comments um, about my theory and what you guys think, I'd love to hear it. I really would. Um, I think that I did my research a little bit better than because I, I'm not scripted and I kind of did all the graphics and then they weren't in order. So I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, I greatly appreciate that. And then also something that I missed out about, like the fryer thing. Okay. I see I'm going to give myself much more work because I'm going to have to do some editing. The fryer thing. A fryer is not a monk. 
but it is similar. And they do adopt a lifestyle of poverty and traveling and living in urban areas for purposes of preaching, evangelization, and ministry, especially to the poor. Kind of sounds like Robin Hill and her huntresses, doesn't it? Yeah, so Crudy, great job. Great job with this character arc, and I can't wait to see a little bit more um, about this and see how this goes. So thank you so much for watching this little blurb. I just, I, I, you know, as a YouTuber, and if you're just new to this channel, you won't know this, but I've kind of been in a rut lately, and I've kind of been like, I don't want my channel to be this or that. So this is just something I really wanted to do because I find an interest and breaking down Ruby and why the characters are designed a certain way and why they're named after these certain things and what are the stories that they're named after. And I enjoy that and I just don't feel like there's enough videos about it. So, want to hear, here go. And believe it or not, I usually swear on camera and I didn't even do that. So, I'd like to do more videos like this. I'd like to get a little bit better and plan them out a little bit better, but... Here's where we're at. So thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, notification bell, like they say, but I don't do a lot of Ruby videos. So if you're here for Ruby, stay for Drag Race reviews, stay for cosplays, stay for other stuff. But this is just something I threw together and I may actually get into doing this a little bit more and a little bit better. But thank you so much for watching and keep it greasy. Deuces.